Hello, welcome back to Gordon's channel, and we've come to lesson six of the To Do List app series. And in this lesson, we will implement the opto update options features. And by doing so, we will go through the array method push, the array method includes, and we will learn the set constructor and the for of loop. And at last, we will go through the const keyword. So this is what we have done in previous lessons. We have implement this select element to choose our selections. But now we have a problem because if we have input some new category, for example, housework, then we can see that we doesn't have this option in the select menu. So here, what we need to do is to go to our JavaScript file to add these features. So if we only need to add it when add a new options, when we add a new item, we can go to the add entries and create the element. So after we have created rows, we can go to create a new child for our select element. And the new child is a new option element. And so here we will need to create this new option element, which is document.create element. And the category is option. And this element that has its value as the new value here, input to. And also, it's in the text should be input value two. So it's in the text be input value two. So let's try it. If we have input something else, such as cleaning the floor, which belongs to housework, and now we don't have the option here, but after we have added, we have a new option to filter the house. So this is how to do it with the with the adding but now if we delete it we see that this new option is still existing inside our select menu so instead of doing it in the add entry we should do it create a new function for this purpose so we should go to create a new function called update the select options and here what we need to do is we look through all the rows. So what we do is here we get all the rows and then we look through it with the convert the node XML collection into an array and run the for each loop. So we will convert it into an array and run the for each loop. And if the index is zero, it means the first row, there is no, no need, no information to get. So we use return to escape this iteration. But starting from the second row, we will store the element in the first cell, the text in the first cell into the variable called category. And here, after, after getting this info variable, we need to store it into our data. So we should create a array here. So we have an options being an empty array. So here we will use our first uh, array method, which is push. We use push to add this new item to our array. And after adding all the items, we can use the console log to check if it is working. But of course, we can uh, use the inspect to open the console and check in. But of course, there is no change now because we have not called this function yet. We have implemented it, but we have not called it yet. So let's call it inside our add entry. Here. 
Let's call it inside an ad entry. So now when we have uh, implement some new, for example, if we have input something, we can see the array A. If we have second one, we can see array A, B. So now we should use this to generate these select options. So here, what we will do is to put this into our new function. In here, we don't have the options value. Instead, we should look over this array. And we can use the for each method to look over array. And for each method, accepts a callback function as the argument. So here, in each item, let's call it option. And for each option, we will add a new option to the select element. So here we will have a new option element and its value and in it has to be option. And we will append it as child to the select element. So if we do it in this way we will have a problem. So for example A B we can see that we will be A A B and if I have C it will be another ABC. The reason is that we are not emptying it before we are creating the rendering the new options. So we should empty it first. So here, empty the see that? options. So here we can use see that? element dot in our HTML equals to empty string. So this will empty it. So now, by default, we have two awesome personal and what, and actually we can remove them. Yeah, we can remove them because we don't need the default one anymore. So here we can create a new entry. Say A. We have the option A, B. We have the option B, C. We have the option C. So this is how to uh, do it. But of course, we want to call it when we delete it too. So it is very simple, just call this function. Inside delete item. And remember we should edit after we remove the row. So here we will do this. For example, if we have A, B, C. Now we have A B C in the options. If we have delete B, then we have run the update select options function and we can see that inside the select options we have we no longer have B because we have delete that to do. So for this part it is how to add new options to our select elements. But now let's say if we have another to do with the same category, another A. And if we check here, we see that it becomes A C A. We have a duplicate A. And the reason is that we are not checking duplicate when a when we add a new row. So let's go to here. And there are several ways to remove the duplicate. The first one is to use an if else statement. So if the condition is the array options includes the category. Includes is an array method which is for checking whether this array contains these elements and if it contains this returns true and we don't do anything but if it doesn't include it then it means that it is a new option so we should do the push category to add a new option to it you see let's try it. if we have a b c and then a again you see we have a b c a but now our array is ABC and the options is ABC because we are using includes to check the duplicate case. And of course, because our if code block is blank, so we can simplify it by adding exclamation mark here to mean not including. When we have not the results, then we can put the else code block in the if code block and remove this L part. So here it will, we will have the same result actually. See, this can remove the duplicates. 
and I want to introduce a second way of doing this. So instead of uh, checking here, we go back one step. We don't check if the duplicates, but we do convert it into a set. So here we will let the new set options set equals to. We will use the set constructor because it is constructor, so it is capital letter set. And here we will put options into it. And if you do it this way, you will have an error. So let's say if we add something, you see the error is constructor capital letter set requires new keyword because we are using creating a new set. So we should use new keyword here. So here we can console log it to compare console log the option set. So let's say if I have A, we have the array A set A. If I add a B, I have array AB set AB. But if I have add an A again, the array becomes ABA, but the set is still AB. Because for the set, it has a very important property that it does not allow duplicate. Every item in the set must be unique. So by converting into a set, we are also removing all the duplicate. And actually, using a set is faster than using includes. Because every if you use includes in every iteration, it tries to loop over the whole array to check if there is the inclusion. So it is a slower way. But if you use set at the end, it is running just once. So set is a much faster way. And it is always recommended. So here, because we are using set here, so instead of using the array for each method, we should use a loop for the set. And to loop over set, we use the for of loop. So then option of option set. Okay. And here we can put this inside the for of loop. So here we are using for of loop because it is set. So let's try it. If I have A, B, B, and A again, then we will remove the duplicate. You see, our options only have a single item for each option. So because we are using set, and we can remove the unnecessary part a bit. The console log, we don't need to check it anymore, so we can remove it a bit. And after doing this, we will see that we still have one more problem. So let's say if we have add something to the options. And now we can filter it with the select filter, but we don't have a choice to go back and not selecting anything and showing every result. So we should create the default options. And if you remember, in our filter entries, we are checking the selection against empty string because in our previous setting, we have an option of nothing, which is empty string. So we can create here. So we can, uh, after emptying the select options, we can create an empty options here. So we can do this. And here, if the indentation is not correct, we use Shift Alternate F to format it automatically. And here, the value and the inner text should be empty string. Okay, so here, if we try it, see, now we have A, B, and the default option empty string. So this is one of the way to do the anti string, but I want to introduce you to a better way because you see we are using the default option here and also here. If we want to change it, we need to change two places. And why we want to change it? For example, you may think that our user interface is not intuitive for our user. They may not know that they can choose here to filter it. So we can add some text here, just like the placeholder of text box. So we can go to here instead of using a explicitly empty string, we can do here. Create a constant. Constant is for some settings. So you don't want the program to change your constant. 
go by practice will use all capital letter and because it is all capital letter we'll use underscore to separate words so default option equals to let's say it is empty string now so we will replace our previous space with the default option constant here Check against default option and here when we create a new element it is default option here you see if we have let's say if we yeah it is now the the default option is now empty string but if we want to change it it is very easy now because we just need to change it at the top so it just want to change it here they choose category 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 so here if we tier a b you see we can have different options but we can easily go back to the uh, not selecting anything and this one by default it will be okay we don't have an option here because we have not included anything yet but once we include a new to do for example we have cleaning the floor which is housework and after we have the first uh, to do options to do list item we can see that this data box automatically becomes choose category so to indicate to you user that they can choose the category here so this is how to do the update the select options menus um, automatically i hope you like this lesson and if so please subscribe my channel so that uh, you can feel the new videos as soon as i upload it and if you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comment section and i will come to answer and i look forward to seeing you in the lesson seven thank you bye bye